Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we have another interesting rifle provided by one of our viewers. In fact, it was a viewer of uh, both mine and uh, Henry Chan from uh, Nine Hole Review. Uh, he sent this for both of us to review. Um, I'm very happy to take a look at this one because I've been wanting to do a review on a, on a real Galil for quite some time. Uh, these have not been imported for many, many, many years. In fact, this is a pre-86 that you see right here. So it's a very, very early version uh, of the Galil. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the Galil and the Israeli Defense Force. If you look at the start of the uh, of the State of Israel uh, in the 50s, uh, one of some of their first firearms that they utilized were the FNFAL. Now they had found uh, in uh, various various engagements that the the FAL was extremely heavy and it was not very reliable uh, in the sand in that, in that region of the world. Now during uh, the Yom Kippur War and some other wars, the Israelis had a chance to uh, take a look at AKs very up close and personal. And they were very fascinated and uh, very pleased by the reliability and durability that the AK showed in that particular environment. And again, the, the, the fouls having the issues that they had, I think also the Israelis did also want their own firearm. Uh, being a country that's uh, independent uh, in that part of the world and who's pretty much on its own, uh, I think there was a really big benefit to them having their own firearm. During the competition, there were uh, some firearms that were, that were tested by the Israelis, including the Stoner 63, the M16A1, the HK33, as well as the Galil. Now, the Galil was designed by a gentleman named Yisrael Galil. Uh, it was in the late 1960s. Uh, what his idea was was to take the AK-47 and have the reliability of the AK-47 with some of the benefits of the M16. And the rifle was designed based off of a Belmont uh, M76. And you can see by the frame, uh, the receiver on here, which is uh, stainless, which is steel, and it's milled. The initial rifles that were manufactured did, in fact, use uh, original uh, Valmet uh, receivers. Now, Mr. Gellow wanted to stay with the uh, milled receivers. He did not feel that the stand receivers were strong enough, and he felt that it was a much stronger uh, material, so that's, that is what he went with. Now, you do see that we have some some uh, some fail on here, too. You'll see we have the fail type side folding stock. Uh, we do have a basic AK system. Uh, some of the really big enhancements that came up out of this was, uh, first off, you had the, the Velman style front sight. You had a flip-up tritium night sight on here as well. But you notice, like, just like the Velman, you have a longer sight radius, which was a, a big thing. You know, due to the fact that the uh, AKs had such a short sight radius, that also affected their, their accuracy being very, very minimal. It was a major benefit by giving you a longer line of sight. Uh, with having the rear sight move to the rear of the receiver. And the way this receiver cover fits, it is extremely tight, so you don't really have any issues with the, with the receiver cover moving. You will also see that they changed uh, from a standard cocking handle to one that uh, it angles upward, so you were able to gri grab it from the top. Now, the magazines here are more similar to that of an AK-type magazine. They do not lock open in the last shot. Uh, again, very similar. The, the Gelo was chambered in 5.56 and 7.62 NATO. Uh, and the one that was most popular was obviously the uh, the 556 five, NATO, uh, as well as the 762 was more of a DMR type or a designated marksmanship type or type rifle. There are three different types of rifles that were manufactured for the Gellil. You had first was the Gellil ASM or Automatic Rifle Machine Gun, uh, which is basically what you see here. Uh, it's a basic infantry rifle with a bipod bottle opener, as well as wire cutters. And you also notice that we have a carrying handle. The next one was the Gellil AR or Automatic Rifle. It's basically the same rifle. Uh, minus the bipod with no carrying handle. Then you had the Gellil Sar, which was the short 15.7 inch barrel. Now, although during the uh, the trials the Gellil did come out the winner, there was some other issues that came into effect. First off, in the 70s, there was a large number of M16A1 rifles that came into Israel as part of a, a U.S. Uh, if you want to call it a foreign um, foreign military sale or foreign military aid, and those M16A1s proved to be uh, a more comfortable, lighter. Uh, easier to use, uh, they proved to be a little more accurate, and when you look at the cost, um, it was, I mean, the, these were very expensive. So they ended up integrating the M16A1s into the IDF, and fewer and fewer and fewer of these, and these ended up getting pretty much replaced. Now by by around 2000, you had all the Gellils that were pretty much out of service in favor of M16A1s uh, type rifles and carbines. And it was still determined by the IDF that it was cheaper for them to either get or purchase uh, M16A2, A4s, and M4 carbines from the U.S. government. Uh, it would still you know, increase uh, savings drastically over building their own gun. So the M16 and M4 would go on to be the basic service rifle for the IDF right up until uh, the introduction of the IWI Tavor. 
Now, the Tavor was a rifle that was designed and manufactured in Israel uh, that would go ahead and replace uh, everything in the, in the current inventory to an Israeli-made weapon. So the Galil really had a short life, but uh, it found some foreign military sales uh, where it did very, very well, such as Colombia, for instance. Uh, and there were several other countries as well who adopted the Galil-type rifle. South Africa also had an unauthorized version of this rifle that they reverse engineered uh, down in uh, South Africa. So the rifle did have, it, did have its champions. In 2008, the Gelo went through a transformation to a modernized version version of what we see here called the ACE. Now, this particular rifle is chambered in 762 by 39 It's manufactured in 5.56 and 7.62. Um, this particular one, 762 by 39 is my personal rifle. This is uh, one of the ones that I really, really liked and I ended up keeping. Um, I have done videos on both the 5.56 and the 7.62 NATO version. Basically, what we have here is a modernized version of it. Uh, we still have a cold hammer forged barrel. Uh, except for the barrel on this one, you're going to find is a 1 in 7 instead of a 1 in 12. The original rifle, when it was utilized uh, by the IDF, it was uh, you know pre-NATO. So you had a 1 in 12 inch and a 55 grain full metal jacket projectile. So here you have a cold hammer forged barrel. We have a polymer lower receiver instead of the full uh, milled receiver, so you get you know, much lighter. You still have uh, an ambidextrous safety on here, uh, the right side and the left side. Now, sort of like the uh, the FNC, you have a little sh little guard here which protects the uh, receiver from getting dirty. When the receiver is when the bolt is closed, the this, this plate is engaged, which prevents any kind of dirt from getting in. As the as the reciprocating charging handle goes rearward, it pushes down on the guard to get it out of the way. So basically, what it does is this gun is completely sealed. There's absolutely no way anything can get into this rifle for as far as dirt or filth. You do have sort of a manual forward assist on, on the front here. We have a 1913 rail going all the way across the top, uh, two segments. As you can see, we still have the, uh, the sight radius is the same. We have the uh, sight in the rear of the uh, receiver cover. Uh, the magazine release is uh, very similar to that of the standard AK. Uh, this is the same on either the 5.56 or the uh, 7.62. Now, there's some interesting uh, facts about this. We have a telescopic and side folding stock on this rifle. Now, the Gallo Ace has done quite well. Uh, this is now the service rifle for the Vietnamese Army, uh, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, who have been utilizing AKs that were used in you know, the original conflict with the United States back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, it's settled on manufacturing the Gallo Ace in 7.62 by 39, the same rifle you see right here, manufacturing it in Vietnam. Also used, utilized in Colombia. Now, Columbia is an interesting, uh, very interesting about this, too, because the company there called Embell. There are, there are some people at Embell who claim that uh, the Gallo Ace was designed by them in Colombia. Uh, I do believe they were the first ones to adopt it. Uh, the rifle has also had some different uh, variations as far as magazines is concerned. If you look at the 5.56, you have uh, one version that takes the original Gallo magazine, and one takes the Stenag magazine. Same thing with the 7.62, you have one that takes the standard uh, Galil. Um, AK type magazine, and then you have another one that takes the um, SR25 type magazine. So, although the uh, Gelo was not really very popular within the IDF itself, it did have a, a following outside and through very through through many countries. Uh, they were manufactured in other countries as well. It's gone on with with the Gelo Ace uh, to become very popular. The Chilean Army also adopted the Gelo Ace in 5.56 with a, with the standard AR15 M16 type magazine. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take the glow lots in the range and we're going to see how it shoots.
The rifle shot very, very impressive. Uh, as you'll see from the target, uh, it was probably less than three inches um, at 100 yards with iron sights. Both myself and Henry from Nine Hole Review both shot this thing at uh, 100 yards with uh, iron sights. And fortunately, Henry's eyesight's a lot better than mine, and he got some very, very, very impressive grips with it. For an old girl, it shoots really, really well. Uh, recoil is very moderate. That's what you'd expect out of any kind of uh, AK type firing 5.56. Um, it was a real pleasure to shoot. It's been a long time since I've had an opportunity to fire one. Now, unfortunately, uh, this model here, if you were to try to find one of these uh, model 392s here, you're probably looking at three thousand uh, dollars because there was very few of them that were brought into the country. So they they have a very very uh, high price tag. The Gillel Aces are available, you know, regularly. They're you know you're looking at twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for a Gillel Ace in any one of the calibers. But if you wanted to get a a real one, you're really talking a good chunk of money. These were available in the United States in both the 5.56 as well as the 7.62 NATO uh, cartridges. So again, I want to thank the you know the viewer who loaned this to us. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, even better share, and please consider donating on our Patreon. Thank you very much.